I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan, and today on the Retro Hunting Adventures, we're going to look at my Game Gear collection. Why? Because it's my channel and I can do what I want. No, seriously. I did just pick up a bunch of Sega Game Gear games, 20 in total, so I had to upgrade from a little plastic tray to this big storage box to hold them all. That was 20 on top of the 36 I already had, mind you, so you can see that this collection now takes up a lot more room and as such I thought it would be useful to go over it and also share what new games I just picked up. To do that though we first got to get this top layer of games out of the way so I can get down to most of the new ones and I'm having trouble finding a place to set them all on this chair which is why you heard a couple of them clatter and hit the floor. That's why it's a good thing they're in clamshell cases because otherwise I might have been very sad to have had a cart get damaged or stop working. This interruption is brought to you by Tango, who likes back scratches, butt pats, and general being paid attention to over video games. And whenever he shows up and complains, I am more than happy to oblige. So thank you, Tango, for that interruption. Let's see where he goes from here. Is he going to try to jump in my lap? No, apparently he thinks better of it because he can see all the video game stuff that I've got sitting out right now. I thought maybe he'd go for his usual spot on the couch. You can see the orange cat hairs that have pretty much coated that end of the couch, which is why don't set anything there. I leave it for him to lay on whenever he chooses, but nope, he didn't want that either. So let's get back to the games in the collection here, starting with the adventures of Batman and Robin. One of the new ones that I just picked up. We'll follow that by Aladdin for Game Gear, which I already had. And then, if you don't mind, I'm going to turn on the light because it's a little dark to see through some of these plastic clamshells. They aren't entirely clear. So, let me switch to the light as we look at Asterix and the Great Rescue. Bartman vs. Radioactive Man is another one I just picked up. The Baseball 91 I already had. And Batman and Robin I had. And Beavis and Butthead I already had. Bonkers Wax Up was new. Some of these you'll be able to tell came from the same lot because they have AD written on them. Captain America and the Avengers is a new one. Chicago Syndicate. You can see what I mean here about AD. And Chuck Rock 1 I already had. Chuck Rock 2 was brand new. So nice to have the sequel at long last. Columns I've had since almost day one, I think. Cutthroat Island, that was new. And uh, Deep Duck Trouble, had that one for a long time. Dragon the Bruce Lee story, that was new. So now I need to put these two back in the front, which is easier said than done because they keep pulling up every time I try to put it down. So yeah, this wasn't a perfect solution for a bigger case, but at least... It holds all of them for now until I get some more new Game Gear games. And we have Fred Couples Golf, which I've seemingly had forever and ever. Garfield Caught in the Act was brand new. I was very happy to see that in the stacks of Game Gear games that I went through. G-Lock was not new. Had that one for a long time. The Incredible Hulk was new. I was glad to pick that one up. Jeopardy Sports Edition was another one of the ones I just got. Judge Dredd was as well. Here we have Jurassic Park. Had that one for a while. Land of Illusion was new and not cheap either, I might add. Lion King had that for a while. NFL game. Another NFL game. And Pac-Man I also had for a while, like those NFL games. And PGA Tour, not new. Primal Rage, not new. Putt and Putter, I picked up loose for a few bucks. I think I had previously featured that on Retro Hunting Adventures. Psychic World is not new. And RBI Baseball 94 is not new. So now we can get to the ones that I had to move out of the way just so we could look at the ones underneath. Let's pull another stack over and go through them. You can see some of my piles are just sitting here waiting to be put back in once we go through the rest of them. So first stack we have a Sonic Drift game got that imported Sonic Drift 2 the sequel 
They didn't release really Sonic Drift 1 here, only 2. Sonic Spinball and Sonic the Hedgehog. You'll notice there are a lot of Sonic games on Game Gear. So much so that they could have made a compilation just of Sonic Game Gear games if they had ever set their minds to it. Next up, we have a stack with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 featuring Tails. Which is always confusing because that label makes it look like it's two games, but nope, it's actually the sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog 1. It's a not a two game and one cartridge. They just did the label design in a really weird way. There's Sonic Triple Trouble. There's Sports Trivia. And there's Stargate. Had that one for quite a while too. Grab another one of these stacks here. And we'll take a look at what I've got. Might have to uh, reorganize a little because I think I jumped ahead of myself with one of these stacks. So let me move that one aside. Here we have Rise of the Robots. That was a new one I just picked up. And Road Rash I've had for a while. Slider I've had for a while. And Sonic Chaos. Yet another Sonic game on Game Gear. They did definitely that that the I can't talk today. They definitely did not skimp on Sonic games when it came to this handheld. Probably because they were the only reason people wanted a Game Gear in a lot of cases was just to play the Sonic Portable games. Then Game Boy Advance came along and changed all of that. Super Columns, Super Monaco GP. And Tasmania Escape from Mars, that's another one I just picked up. Tasmania had that one for a little bit. Tasmania not being one of my favorite Game Gear games, but I don't get rid of it. VR Troopers is new, just got that out of the lot of 20. Woody Pop had that one for a little bit. World Series Baseball, I got that one from a retro swap box. X-Men had that one. But not the sequel, which was X-Men Game Master's Legacy. That one I just picked up. So that's the storage box full of Game Gear games. But I've got some other things, so let me put the filler back into this case that's keeping everything from sliding around too much. And then we'll get to the rest of the Game Gear stuff. This Game Gear carrying case was traded in at the same time as the Game Gear games. The Game Gear inside it is not the one that was in it. It's one that I had refurbished by Fix-It Phil. He fixed all the capacitors in there and we put a new glass screen instead of the plastic screen. All of these instruction manuals came with the Game Gear games. Even the ones that I didn't pick up, there were some manuals that I just got along with the lot, like Star Wars and Shinobi. Sadly, Star Wars and Shinobi weren't among the games, but at least I have manuals for them now. And I never had a Sonic 2 manual, so now I do. Garfield came with both the flip book that has Garfield cartoons and the instruction manual, so nice two for one. Dragon. The Bruce Lee Story, Cutthroat Island, Chicago Syndicate, a pretty beat up Captain America manual, but at least it's there, and The Adventures of Batman and Robin. So I got manuals for quite a few of those games and also manuals for ones that I either don't have games for or previously had without manuals. So some upgrades and also some ones that I can upgrade to later when I manage to get the game to go with them. Last but not least, we have Mega Man in a Game Gear clamshell case, which should obviously show you that's a reproduction case because all Game Gear games that I know of anyway came in a cardboard box. And the cardboard box for Mega Man in particular is stupidly expensive, so I don't own one. And I do have an instruction manual, but it's not in here because this isn't the proper size for the Game Gear box. So if I put the manual in here, I'd actually crinkle it or crush it. And I don't want to do that. So I keep the manual separate from the game 
but I keep the game in the clamshell case so I can put that case on display when I'm not playing Mega Man. And here's my refurbished Game Gear from Fix It Phil with Mega Man in it. US Gold presents. And I'll just let the rest of this footage speak for itself because Fix It Phil did such an excellent job refurbishing, repairing my Game Gear that it's just beautiful to play Mega Man on this now. Or any of these other new Game Gear games that I just recently picked up. So it was quite a weekend for Game Gear games. I had never bought 20 at once, nor gotten a carrying case. This is the first one I've ever had for Game Gear. And so many instruction manuals too. I was pretty stoked. I'm Mr. Mega Man fan. This has been the Retro Hunting Adventures. And thank you for watching.